I grew up in Selma, Alabama. Uh, my mom and dad divorced when my brother and I were very young, but we moved in with my maternal grandparents, my mom's mom and dad. Uh, my dad uh, shortly remarried a woman that had a son from her previous marriage. And when he did, he withdrew from being a parent. He was just not there for us as he was for them, for his stepson. And there were times I would go by his house and knock on the door and he wouldn't answer it. And you, I, I knew that he was there. And my mother eventually remarried, but she married a man that my grandparents definitely did not approve of. So she and this man are living in Selma and she's coming and visiting us on the weekends, my brother and I. And I can remember as a child, I'd be in my bedroom looking out the window when she left crying because I couldn't understand. It's like, why are we not with you? You know, grandparents, my Nana and Papa were awesome, but I wanted to be with my parents and I wasn't. But as I grew up, uh, I guess I was around 17 years old, 18 years old, I started really experimenting with things like drugs and alcohol and, and sex, you know, with women and men and just really got myself out there and my grandparents were trying as best they could to lead me in the right direction. We were in church weekly, very involved in the community. But for some reason, I just seemed to fight against that. When I left the junior college, I moved to Montgomery, but I had my own apartment, which meant I had practically no accountability. And I would go out every night to the bars and drinking and drugging and just looking for something, not even knowing what I'm really looking for and sleeping around and waking up the next morning realizing this is not it. And I knew about God, but I just didn't know how to reach out to God. And I felt like serving God would mean I'd have to lose the life I was living, like it was such a great thing to lose. So my addiction took me through 30 years of some pretty serious points. I attempted suicide multiple times. The last time I've attempted suicide, I put a gun to my stomach and I pulled the trigger. I had just taken 100 clonopin and was ready to die. I was so tired of the, just sensing the disappointment in my family. I felt like I just heard them all the time. They were always worried about me. It was never a really good conversation because they knew I was not doing right. My actions, even though they may not directly affect someone around me, are affecting them because I'm not being there as a father, I'm not being there as a parent, or maybe not even being there as a friend. In 2006, I was at the height of my addiction. I was addicted to everything you could be addicted to as narcotics go. And I prayed to God, I just said, God, I said, if you can take this life that I have really screwed up and make it into the life that you want it to be, I said, here it is. I said, I have nothing else left. I said, I want to be normal. I want to live a healthy life. So I got out of jail. Uh, I went to Wings and that was October the 2nd of 2006 and walked in the door there and felt like I was at home. There was so much love there for me and as I progressed through the program and I went through some different issues going on in my life, I realized that these people are here to help me, not to hurt me. I, I was there for seven years before I moved out and I went through every program they had to offer. I just wanted to keep getting better and better and growing more and more forward. And uh, Wings was there for me and today I'm, I'm there for them. They have been just the answer to every prayer in my life I've ever had because there's nothing short of a miracle that I'm here today. The fact that I'm a priest is something I never thought would happen. I really wasn't seeking after that. It was a, kind of a desire as a teenager. But to be a priest, to be a friend, to be a father, to be a parent, grandparent, and it's like my life is full and it's rich and I'm so thankful for it.